Um, you recently, you lived in Port Stanley when we met you. And yeah. then you have been in Kingsville for the last couple of years. And now you're back in Port Stanley. That's correct. So the work in this collection, any of it from before your move or is it all um, Port Stanley? Area? Nope. Uh, some of it's from Kingsville. The um, Actually, a fair bit really it is. Abandons from Kingsville, that, that barn. The barn. Oh yeah, the, Abandons really, really nice. The, yeah, that's the, from Kingsville. Yeah. Um, yeah. Entry point is from Kingsville with the rutted road going into the field. That's from Kingsville. That's just down the street from my house. Um, through the gates is from Kingsville. Uh, the Beautiful. meeting place is Rondo, kind of halfway in between. Uh, what else have I got in there? <laughs> well, let's let's talk um, about entry point a little bit. I love that red house um, kind of contrasting against the landscape. It really stands out when you look at the piece. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you incorporate old buildings into your landscapes a lot. Uh, is when you were first studying, like you studied um, art at the Academy in Toronto. Um, yep. And I assume learned some of the traditional landscape painting techniques there. Actually, oh. they didn't teach landscapes at all there. Oh, okay. So, so they, they, it was all figurative and still life. Oh. And I did landscapes ever since I was a little kid. So, and that was my love, and it always was. So, yeah. I went to the academy until my first still life color piece. And I thought, okay, I, so after you do your first still life color, then you have to do a couple more, two or three more, like two pieces, then your graduation piece. But it's basically a repetition. It's kind of reinforcing what you learn. Yeah. And I thought to myself, okay, they don't teach landscapes and it's going to cost a lot of money to finish. So I'm going to take the money that I figured I'm going to need to complete the course. And I'm going to focus on uh, workshops with noted landscape painters in the U S so that's what I did. Fantastic. So I, that's how, and then I went with a bunch of, you know, people that I really admire and I took yeah. workshops with them. Yeah. So. That's great. There's so many ways to learn um, yeah. to paint. Right. And you have to find what, what works for you and what keeps you motivated and landscape has always been that big motivator and fascination for you so um do you have do you find yourself applying the same techniques to capture like to bring a building into the scene or do you have to adjust a bit to add architecture uh you have to adjust a bit because architecture has to be a little bit more exacting right because you got perspective to deal with and you have it's a man-made structure so it's not like a, a a tree or something like that where you know it's it's you put a branch it's more in a organic. Spot, no one's going to yeah, notice. <laughs> exactly, or a rock, or whatever. As long as it's believable. But if you have the perspective wrong in a building, it's going to stick out like a sore thumb. So, um, usually, when I do something with the building, I if I do a landscape alone, yeah, I just take the brush and I paint right on the canvas, and I start with my underpainting right in the canvas. But if I have a building in it, I usually do a drawing, and make sure the perspective's right. Then I transfer it, and then I carry on with my underpainting on top of my my transfer very cool so, yeah 